If the cops break down your door, who pays for the damages? Is suing the police even worth the effort? Let's break down what you should do and what you shouldn't do if the police break down your door. Welcome to Flushy Fight Club. Ring the bell. First, you should not physically fight the cops. Any other trespasser, you can use reasonable force depending on your state's law. With cops, they've got guns, tasers, and asps, and they usually travel in groups. If you wanna pick a physical fight with the police, you're asking for a whooping. Plus, the legal consequences, if you're wrong in using force against the police, are severe. If you think that you're the subject of an unlawful arrest and you're trying to use reasonable force to resist it, but if the judge later rules that you were wrong and you're guilty of assaulting a police officer, you're looking at likely a felony conviction along with time in prison. But if the police violate your rights, you can defend yourself in the court of public opinion. Publicity often works very well, especially in our current culture. A few months ago, we told you about a Florida deputy who ordered a pregnant mother out of her car while being held at gunpoint. Miss Washington's publicity of that encounter brought light to other issues with this same deputy in Florida including a previous case where he wrongly arrested a bail bondsman who was trying to subdue a person that he was bringing into jail, allowing the actual alleged criminal to escape in the process. I suspect the publicity of Miss Washington's encounter with Deputy DeSue is largely what led to his actual resignation from the police force. Oof, this round's a draw, but let's keep this party going. Let's say a canine officer was searching your car and scratched up your brand new leather seats. Here's how I usually see that kind of thing going down if you bring it up in court. Judge, this officer over here pulled me over for swerving. He started asking me about drugs. He put the dog in my car and scratched up my brand new leather seats. Let me explain how the system works. I'm just here to determine if you failed to maintain your lane. If you think the deputy broke the law or somehow violated your rights, you'll need to file a complaint with his department. That's not my job. But will that really work? The department investigating their own members? Maybe, but I'm skeptical. I once discovered video evidence of a deputy flat out retaliating against my client due to a personal beef from years earlier. The video made the deputy and the department look so bad that the prosecutor dropped the charges before we even got to court. But then the sheriff's office determined it to be merely a joke and took no disciplinary action against the deputy who was retaliating. <sighs> Okay, we're on the ropes, but we got this. The cops pull you over and ask, you don't mind if I look in your trunk, do you? You should let them, right? No. You should never ever consent to any police search or seizure. If you consent, you take away any possible legal challenge that you might could have mustered later on, simply because you agreed to let the police do what they were trying to do. You shouldn't try to physically stop the police from a search or seizure, but you shouldn't give them permission either. Instead, you hit them back in court with a lawsuit under section 1983 of the United States Code. This is a claim that a state actor has deprived you of your constitutional rights. They can be hard to muster against the police. However, it can be possible to win or at least get a nice settlement. This is where you definitely need a lawyer on board to help get the best result possible in court. Now I know people hate it when a lawyer says you need to hire a lawyer. However, many times that's simply the truth. All right, coming back. Oh, but the cops have loaded their gloves with something called qualified immunity. This is a doctrine that bars many lawsuits from proceeding against the police, and it might affect your Section 1983 claim. While the doctrine definitely needs to be reformed, lawsuits against the police and their departments have resulted in many settlements and judgments in favor of the citizens. And you may have a better chance of compensation if the police actually damage your property and if their damage was unreasonable given the circumstances. However, if the police have a valid warrant for your home and they have to force entry because you're not home or you refuse to open the door, then you're likely not to recover any kind of payout for that damage. But if the police try to serve a warrant at the wrong house and they damage the wrong house in the process, which happened to Mr. David Craner in Washington, DC, you have a much better chance of recovering your damages. But even then, it took Mr. Craner over five months and lots of back and forth to get partial recovery for his damages. Side note, it's impressive that David's security was so good that the police were trying to serve a warrant and enter his house and even they couldn't break in. <sighs> oh, we ain't done yet. Which brings us to the single most important thing you can do to fight back against the cops, vote. 
Police departments are run by someone you elect or somebody who serves at the pleasure of someone you elect. That's the way our system works. And before you think I'm suggesting you need to go out and vote for Democrats who trumpet defunding the police, keep in mind that the three cities with the largest payouts over the past 10 years, amounting to $2.5 billion total, are all Democrat-run strongholds. In case the cops show up at your house with a search warrant, check out my next video on exactly what to do. I'll see you over there. And remember, don't talk to the police.